So, back when I was in junior high, I had a thing for styles. I loved styles and I would doodle them every single year. And my classmates, my friends, would always wonder, what's the meaning of your styles? But back then, my styles didn't have any meaning. My mom used to teach art, so my brother and I would always grew up learning about famous painters. So, like Da Vinci, Uncle, like Montigliani, a lot of them. But there was one day that she showed me this painting, The Tree of Life by Gustav Schmidt. And I automatically fell in love with it, because obviously it had a lot of struggles. Uh, but at the same time, I finally found the meaning behind my styles, which I'll be sharing with you later on. My name is Camila Sainz, and today I'll be sharing kind of my secret sauce to happiness. Even though happiness means a lot of different things to different people. But for me personally, happiness is a state of mind that allows us to feel like we have enough. We have enough that we want to share with other people. We have enough that we are willing to do other things for other people. We don't become greedy because we're happy. We're happy from within. For me, being happy means that we complain less because we start seeing things in life that maybe other people see them. So I'm going to start with a picture of my room when I was a teenager. It was a really messy room. But as you can see, I love the tree of life so much that I drew, I, I drew my own tree of life behind that bed. Obviously, it wasn't as pretty as Gustav Klimt's painting, but I tried my best. And on the other wall, there was a lot of photos, a hundred of photos. And I would go and sit on my hummock, look at these photos, and just stare at all these moments uh, with my family, my friends, my dog, some trips that we did abroad, and I was just so happy. And on top of that wall, there's this quote, the quote that is the first ingredient to my secret sauce for happiness. This quote says, best things in life aren't things. Best things in life aren't things is something I learned from a very early age. Um, one of the goals that I wanted to do was to travel around the world because I learned that best things in life aren't things means good things in life are more like experiences, skills and languages that you can learn or that you can have because people cannot take those things away from you. So when I graduated from high school, I applied for a scholarship to study in Taiwan. I got it and I moved to Taipei. Because I had a fully funded scholarship, I didn't have to worry about my tuition fee, about any other expenses. So if you go back and ask my roommates back in university, they would tell you I was a very cheap person because I would save every cent I had just so I could travel during my winter breaks and my summer breaks. I would only try to eat cucumber and tomato. During summer, I would not turn on the AC because otherwise the, the electricity bill was going to be too expensive. Um, and if I was going to go to party, I would only go to parties if they were for free. So I would save every cent I had, and I got to travel. I got to travel a lot. And now I can share some ex experiences, like the summer break, I traveled to Kenya. I traveled to Kenya and worked as a food journalist. And I got to see different cultures from the ones I've seen before. This is the Maasai tribe. Um, my host dad in Kenya took me to visit them. They were dancing in front of me. They were jumping and singing. And I was like, whoa, this is very different kind of dancing, right? Like, I'm Latina, so this kind of dancing is very different from what Latinas know, right? Um, later on, they took me on a tour to their houses. This is the Maasai tribe houses. Um, these are huts that are made of sticks, mud, grass, and other things. It definitely looks very different from my house. Maasai people are very tall, usually even taller than their houses. When we went uh, inside their huts, it was really dark. Their houses didn't even have windows. When we went out, they told me, oh, Camila, would you like to like, help us fix this little part of our house? And I was like, yeah, sure. And they had like, this muddy thing that I grabbed with my hands, and I put on the wall, and they all started laughing. And I'm like, why are they laughing at me? 
I learned that this money thing is actually cowed poop. So the Maasai tribe, they actually used cow dung and other kind of things to build their houses. And every time I tell these kind of experiences with my other friends, they would think they're funny. I would laugh and I'll think, wow, that was actually a funny experience. So best things in life means like these kind of experiences, nobody will ever be able to take away from me because I have them and I can repeat them in my head and feel happy over and over again. One of my other experiences was when I was also working as a photojournalist in Nepal. I was photographing a lot of different weddings. Weddings that obviously look very different from weddings that I know. Um, this was a beautiful bride that I thought, wow, it's just so colorful, so pretty, everything was nice. Until the bride's parents started washing the groom's feet as part of the ceremony. And while I was taking the photo, all, all I was thinking was like, oh my god, my mom would never touch my boyfriend's feet, right? But then slowly I started understanding cultures are so different. Everybody is so different and we just need to learn to respect them, understand them, and just know that we're different from each other. It doesn't mean that they're weird. We're just different because we were born in different places. So I can go on and on and on with many other experiences because before I graduated university, I actually got to travel to almost 35 countries, only during my winter breaks and my summer breaks, just because I got to save money and not to spend that money on material things. I decided to invest that money in experiences, languages, and skills. I'm actually very grateful that my mom sent me to a boarding school when I was a kid because my first language is Spanish. And later on, when I moved to Taipei, I also learned Mandarin. So now I can basically talk with 40% of the population in the world. So, best things in life are in things. Just means, if, uh, just invest your money on things that are not material. Because material things, will go bad at some point. They're not going to bring you that happiness that these experiences and these skills can bring. So moving on to my second ingredient to, of my secret sauce for happiness. Give without expecting anything in return. This is actually very tricky, but I'm going to be giving you some examples. I'm from Guatemala, a country where, according to the World Bank, more than 60% of the population lives in poverty. And since I was a kid, my mom made me understand that I come from a very privileged family. I learned to acknowledge that privilege, and that helped me give without expecting anything in return. So, when I was 16 years old, I started volunteering for this organization that would make houses for people that were living in extreme poverty. I volunteered in this organization for almost four years because the very first house I built was for a five-year-old girl. Her name is Astrid. Um, and when I got to see her house for the first time, the house didn't really have walls. The floor was made of dirt, and the roof had a lot of holes, so when it rained, it would get actually very muddy. The house was the size of my bathroom. So, I couldn't believe that she was living in that tiny space with one mattress that she had to share with her mom, her dad, and her other two sisters. And they were only living maybe an hour away from the house. When we finished building her house, she came to me, hugged me, and she said, Camila, thank you so much for my new house, because now when it rains, I'm not going to get scared that my drawings will get wet. And that, for me, changed the rest of my life. Because I realized that we come from a privileged family, and that gives us some sort of responsibility to give back without expecting anything in return. Another story that I can tell you was a winter break that two of my best friends and I traveled to the Philippines to build a dormitory for street children. Um, there was a typhoon in the Philippines that killed more than 7,000 people and left more than 2 billion people homeless. So this dormitory 
these are only for street children, were actually for all the kids that were left on the street after the temple. So when you're giving without expecting anything in return, it doesn't necessarily need to be only in your country. It can be everywhere. And obviously, I'm not suggesting you to go and build houses or dormitories for street children. You can do even smaller actions. Me and my boyfriend started um, donating blood a year ago, every three months. And once I started doing a bit of research, I realized that according to the Red Cross, every two seconds, someone in America needs blood. So imagine in other countries. In fact, with a donation with of one person, three lives can be saved. So we can start with tiny, tiny things. For example, if you're still in high school and you see that your classmate is struggling with math, you can just go and help your classmate understand their class. Because at least for me, math and all those classes with numbers are really hard in school. But um, let's say if you're at work and there's a new coworker, you can just help that person, just show them the office, like invite that person to lunch. Just what if this person is an introvert? and it's just feeling very uncomfortable in your first day of work. So what I'm trying to say is when you give without expecting anything in return, you can actually feel happier because you realize that your skills, your privilege, whatever it is, can be helpful and can create an impact in other people's life. So whenever someone thinks about you, that person can actually smile. We never know when is our last day in the world, right? And sometimes we take that for granted. We always say, like, Ooh, in five years, I'll do this. In 10 years, I'll do this. And that brings me to my third and last ingredient for a secret sauce of happiness, which is always start with an end in mind. And that is kind of related with the spirals I was telling you in the very beginning. I see everything in life as a spiral. Everything will always have a beginning and it will always have an end. But sometimes we attach ourselves to problems. We attach ourselves to people, to places, to bad memories. And this makes us unhappy. And that's why we don't realize. Everything in life will always end, or at least will have a pause. The way I see it is there's a lot of spirals. Spirals can be longer, shorter, smaller, whatever it is. And for me, every spiral represents the person a trip, a country I've been to, a meal, whatever it is. So when I go back and see my tree of life, I can just see a lot of happy moments. And that's what, at this point, the tree of life represents to me. Obviously, Gustav Klimt is not the meaning that he wanted to give to his painting, but that's a beautiful the beauty of art. We can just give whatever meaning we want to art. Right? Um, so I just hope that everybody starts building their tree of life with happy memories. And if at some point you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling unhappy, if there's something going wrong, you can go back and understand where is, where is it going wrong. Because to be honest, um, today I am the CEO and co-founder of a school startup. I am a PhD student. I also teach at an international college. And it's been wonderful. But I know at some time, at some point, that will end as well, right? Uh, when I was in high school, I was doing volunteer work. I was building houses for four years. During college, I traveled. I got to see many other cultures and countries that I also finished. And at this point, I'm in this stage of my life. Everything changes. It changes, and it will always change. And we need to be comfortable with that change. So if you haven't, if you're like struggling with that, you can just always go back to my three ingredients, which are Best things in life aren't things. Invest in experiences, languages, and skills. Because those three things, nobody can ever take away from you. Give without expecting anything in return. Because I promise that if you see other people happy, you will also feel happy. We need to acknowledge our privilege. We need to understand that we have different skills that other people might use one day. And thirdly, uh, always start with an end in mind. Don't get attached to bad memories. Don't get attached to bad moments, problems, people. Just understand that everything will change and will always change. Thank you. I hope you all are happy.